Hello! Today we're going to be talking about creating modern team sites in SharePoint Online. This is something that you're going to do all the time. Fortunately, I've found there's a lot of confusion around doing this, and there really shouldn't be. This is something that you need to do often, and it should be a painless process. So we're going to walk through the steps and make sure that you feel confident about what you need to do the next time you need a new SharePoint site. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm just in a regular old SharePoint online site. I'm in a hub, we'll talk about that in a second. And we're just gonna try to go through this fast and easy. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click on the waffle menu, these dots that we see in the upper left, and we wanna to go to the admin settings. You do need to be a SharePoint administrator in your organization to do the steps that I'm showing. Now you go to the admin center and click on SharePoint. That will pop open a new tab, and next you want to click on Sites, and then Active Sites. In this screen, what you see is a list of site collections. I'm not going to go into uh, details about everything that you see on this screen, but I do want you to understand that every site you see listed here um, is known as a site collection in SharePoint. And that's what we're going to create right now. So just click on the Create button, and then you're going to see some tiles. There are two main modern site templates for SharePoint Online. There's the Team site, which is selected by default, or the Communication site, which is the second option. In my experience, I found that the Communication site template would be appropriate for a home page. But in most situations, the team site template is the one you're going to use the most. Uh, so that's my go-to, and I select that the most option, most often. The other option is if you go under other groups, you can create a team site a different way. We're not going to cover it in today's video, but there are two different security models available in SharePoint. You can either use the classic SharePoint security model or Microsoft 365 groups. If you're unsure about this, just go ahead and pick this main tile option here. In here, um, you just go ahead and give your site a name. So um, I'll just come up with a, a fun name for my new site. I'll do uh, Donuts. It'll give you a little confirmation dialog and it even um, creates a group email address and things like that. That's part of Microsoft 365 groups. You want to put yourself in as the group owner. And under advanced settings, you do want to open that because by default, it might not pick your correct time zone. In my case, I want to change this to Eastern. And you don't really need to worry about any of this other stuff. Just leave it as it is. Uh, you don't need any additional owners or things like that, you can just leave that for now and click Finish. All right, so you can see this happen quickly. Normally it does happen pretty fast. Uh, once you see your site there, what you next want to do is join that to a hub if you have one, um, and I'll explain the purpose of that in a second. So in this case, I do have a hub. It's called WWC Hub. And I just need to check next to my site and do associate with hub. And that'll call up a menu. I only have one hub and hit save. In general, the reason I want to do that is so that this will share a navigation with the hub that I already have set up. And that's everything that I need to do in the admin area. Once the site's created, you can just click on the link in the second column. I'm going to close my admin windows because I don't need to do anything more with that. Okay, so here's my hub site home, um, which already existed, and here's my new donut site. When the site first gets created, there's going to be a lot of dummy placeholder content that we don't really care about. 
So the first thing that we want to do is get rid of that and replace it with a new page. So I'm going to go to my pages link on the left side. And then I want to create a new page to use as the home page. And you do want to pick the site page option. This will make a new modern site page. This is a standard page and just like creating sites, you're going to do this often as well. I usually like to just call it whatever the site name is and home. By default, it's going to show a little uh, person box here, um, but you can get rid of that. I tend to find that it looks nicer if you remove that box. Um, I'm also going to put a banner image in here. So we just click on the second icon in the upper left and you can just use the stock images option. Now there can be a lot of differences in opinion on what should be in those banner images. I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time initially worrying about that um, because it's very easy to swap that out. And then once that's set, you can actually recenter the image if you want to. And I'll just click publish. That's it, I have a home page. Um, another thing I like to do is add something. I don't like a big blank area. Um, so what I will also do is get the uh, link to the default documents library, which is automatically created when the site is made. And I'm going to add a modern web part to the page. There's a web part called the Quick Links web part. Um, I just scrolled to that. And there's lots of different ways to make that look. Um, I have a preference. I like the tiles large option. You can set that however you like. Once that's in there, you can just click on the add a link option, paste in a URL, and then make sure you change the title because nobody wants to see title.aspx. That's terrible. Okay, so I'm just going to say documents since it's linking to the documents library. And then also you can go to a reference library of tile images that you can use. And there are a gazillion options here. Um, so you can use the search box in the upper right. In this case, that works well. I just want to, I typed library and it gave me lots of options. So now I have a visual indicator. Okay, I'll click republish again. Now I've created a page, but this isn't yet set as my home page. To, to make that happen, I go back to the pages library and I can click on this ellipsis menu and just go to the drop down and there's an option there that says make home page. And once I do that, it makes it so that when I go to the home page for the site, it's going to use my new home. And naturally, I should update the content and put more things in here, but this is just about getting the site set up. Now notice on the top navigation, it has the same top navigation as this other site, which is my hub that I've joined it to. So when I joined this to the hub, it ensured that it would use the same navigation as my hub. That's good. Now, in this situation, oftentimes you want to show this in that top navigation, or you could call this a uh, global navigation. In order to do that, you need to go to your hub site home. And if you were uh, admin level user, you will see an edit link there. And once I've done that, um, I can modify those options. Give me one second. Let's go do a refresh. Oh, there we go. Okay, and then if you hover over it, you're going to see a little plus icon and you can just paste in there. And then I can say donuts. It'll show in the bottom. I can drag it around and then just hit save. And I've now updated the global navigation. So no matter where I am amongst these different sites that are part of that hub, it's going to include that, make that visible. So that's really handy. Okay, so that's all you have to do as far as the navigation. Now, 
There's another way to create a site uh, using the same template, which you would refer to as a subsite. So if I go to the donuts and I go to site contents, you're going to see there is a second tab here that says subsites. These would be sites that are directly underneath this one, and that's another way that you can do that. Now, if I go to new, there's an option on there that says subsite. Now, this is creating a site using the modern team site, just as I did before, except this won't be a site collection. This will be a sub site under this site collection, but it will still use the same modern uh, team site template. Um, so I'll call this one sprinkles for my donut. Often you use the same uh, name for the uh, URL, but you can, sometimes I'd like to make that shorter um, just to make it a short reference, but that's up to you. Now under here, um, when you're making subsites, it's not going to create an Office 3, excuse me, Microsoft 365 group like it did before. Um, notice there's other options in here. You just want to use the default. Classic experience, these are the older versions of SharePoint sites, and that's not what we're doing today. Um, there are some different options for permissions. If you wanted to create a new permissions group, uh, you would select unique, but usually for a subsite, you just wanted to inherit that down. Um, so again, this is the same type of template. You've got a few more options at the bottom. Usually in this case, I'm going to say no, no, yes. Um, I don't care to display it on the quick launch menu. Um, I don't want to show the top nav bar, but I do like it to use the same uh, top link bar from the parent. Um, so this is creating a site just like we did before, except now we're creating a subsite, but it uses the same template. Notice it's the same home page, it has the same options, it creates a library just the same way as before. So that's just a second way to create a modern team site. Okay, so what we're taking a look at there is just trying to use fast, easy options to create new modern team sites in SharePoint. This is something you're going to do all the time, and it shouldn't be hard or confusing or difficult at all. There's really no limits for the most part in terms of how many sites can be created um, you know, in, in your SharePoint environment. I found in working with people, often there's a lot of confusion around this. And this is so fundamental and key in terms of building out your SharePoint environment. This really should be an area um, where you're confused or concerned or afraid of taking actions. Um, and in fact, it's good to have confidence here because as you're working with other users, this is going to come up a lot. So I hope this is something you do. You should practice it. And I hope after you watch the video, you'll go and create some new team sites and you realize just how easy it is to work with this. So that's everything that we wanted to cover today. I hope you feel confident and you can play through the video and follow these steps to create your own modern team sites in SharePoint Online. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.